Hi guys, I'm in the London store today. I just thought I'd take the time to do a video on Yanagizawa versus Selma, as these are two of the most iconic and recognized brands. And we get asked about these two brands and comparing the, the instruments from each such a lot of the time. So I just thought it'd be interesting to produce a video on the subject. So just a word on the brands, first of all. With Selma, we think of the history of the saxophone, the tradition of the saxophone because it stretches back so many years. We've got 100 years of deep history with Selma, and there are so many notable artists that played Selma instruments over the years, such as Coleman Hawkins, uh, Michael Brecker more recently, John Coltrane going back again, and so many more, I'm not gonna mention them now. But with Yanagazara as well, even though their history isn't as long as that of Selma, in fact, they've been making saxophones since 1954. And prior to that, they were more known as a woodwind manufacturer, and they have actually been making instruments since the, the late 1800s. So a lot of history again with Yanagazawa, but they still have many top artists, um, such as Pete King, uh, Tommy Smith, uh, Barbara Thompson, just to name a few. But they're really just two of the most iconic brands and slightly different in their approaches and their um, if you like, their sound concept. So I thought it would just be a good idea to bring attention to these two brands. Um, on the wall behind me here, I've selected out a Selma Supreme in this lovely matte finish, which I'm gonna contrast and compare with the well-known Yanagizawa AW20. So let's just get straight on and compare these two sexes. <laughs> So let's break this down. I'm going to start off by talking about the sound and the tone of each instrument. So starting with the Yanni, I feel that the sound overall on this Yanni, and in fact all of the Yanni Gazars that I play, um, is just a really warm and full-bodied sound, and it has this sort of spread of sound. It's almost like if you're going to describe it um, physically in front of you, it feels like this, this kind of real oomph to the sound, a real weight of sound, and it's very silky and smooth at the same time, and that sound is retained throughout the entire range. Now, in recent years, Yanagazawa did change to a slightly different bore shape in the WO series, which did actually move it a little bit more in the Selma direction, making it a, a little more focused and darker. And I did hear those differences moving from the 900 series to the WO. But in terms of the focus, for me, it doesn't have the same focus as the, the Selma. The Selma is really known, or particularly the Supreme and other Selmas before it. But I find that this one here is, has this incredible focus to it, which is quite different from the Yanagazawa. It's a very defined sound, 
Um, I like to use the word dry, but I don't know if that translates to you. That's how it feels to me. But there's a very definite core there that you can work with, which again is retained throughout the entire range. And it's a dark sound, as, as you would expect with Selma. Most of their, their saxophones are on the whole, compared to other modern saxes, um, a, a lot darker. So it's this darker, more sort of centralised core sound with a, with a dryness to it, whereas there's a little bit more of a sort of silky smoothness and, a, and an exuberance that I get with the Yanagazawa. Um, so it, it's really interesting playing between the two of them because they, they're both wonderful in their own ways, but for me the Selma sound is doing this, whereas the Yanagazawa sound kind of fills the room out a little bit more. So I guess it just depends what you're looking for in a saxophone in terms of the sound. Okay, next up, let's look at the ergonomics of both of these saxophones. Now, it has to be said that in general, both instruments are absolutely excellent because as I said in the outro, these are two of the leading saxophone manufacturers and they leave no stone unturned when it comes to creating really excellent feeling under the fingers. So let's start with the Yanagazawa and just describe how it feels under the fingers. As you're running your fingers up and down, there's a really nice resonance that you get. You know, you do that standard, everyone does it. You play a scale down to the bottom B flat and see what sound you get. And you can just hear this sort of echo as you play that and touch down on that bottom B flat. And I think that resonance that you get just fingering it is echoed in the actual sound that is produced. But in terms of the, the finger action, it's very smooth from point A to B. There's no squeakiness, no double action or anything like that on every single key. I would say it's slightly on the firmer side. Um, some saxophones can be slightly lighter. Of course, it can all be adjusted by adjusting the spring tension. Um, with my very own Yanni, I had some of the springs just lightened off and it, for me, it plays like butter now. Um, but uh, the, the firmness is quite pleasant and reassuring. Um, and it's very even as well. So I just, just love that, that feel under the fingers. And in terms of the key positioning, it feels fabulous. Um, that perf the palm keys here perfectly uh, match the feel of my left hand here. I wouldn't need to make any adjustments there. And it feels very nice just traveling around the table keys here. No issues with the spacing here on the right hand either. Now, as we move over to the Selma, um, again, I find the positioning very good. They've obviously thought of everything. And even though it's fractionally different as we move to the, the left-hand palm key area here, um, the shaping um, on this D sharp key, it's just slightly further to the body um, than the Yanagazawa was. So you just have to reach in a little bit more. But really, it, it just feels like a fractional adjustment. I, I find myself just immediately adjusting to it as I put my hand on it. I don't find it an issue at all, even though it's slightly different to the Yanagazawa. And in terms of just the, the resistance there, um, I find it's, it's similar to the Yanagazawa actually, that there's a sort of slightly firm resistance, but it's not stiff. Again, it's very smooth and even, as you'd expect for an expensive, uh, exclusive instrument like this. And it, it feels very comfortable down here on the, the e, on the side keys down here and on the E flat to the C um, and all the tables and all the rest of it. So um, it, yeah, overall ergonomics, fantastic on both of them. For me personally, on either saxophone, I would just have them lightened a tad, which as I say, is easy to do um, with a few uh, spring tension adjustments. So time for my final conclusions and thoughts on both saxophones. Now, first of all, I should mention the price. The Supreme is fairly obviously a fair chunk of money more than the Yanagazawa, but that shouldn't put you off. You know, if you are really in the market for a Selma Supreme and you just absolutely love what it's doing for you, if it really speaks to you, then somehow you find that extra bit of money but don't equally be put off by the fact that the Yanagazawa is a couple of thousand pounds cheaper and see it as an, any lesser saxophone than this one, because quite frankly, they're both firmly in that professional camp and they're two of the leading brands, as I said in, in the intro to this video. And they just offer something different, really, as I've described before. I personally really warm to this um, core sound that I'm getting in the Selma sound. Um, you feel a little resistance when you're 
blowing down it and that speaks to me. Other people may prefer that absolutely free-blowing experience that you get on the Yanagazawa, which is why I think overall with Yanagazawa, it tends to be that saxophone that has wide commercial appeal because it just appeals to so many more sax players, perhaps um, intermediate sax players um, who are coming up through the ranks and just want something that just responds so quickly. Well, that's what Yanagazawa for me does beautifully. It feels with the Selma like um, you just have to work for the sound a little bit more in order to attain uh, the beauty of sound that you can eventually get from a Selma. So that's perhaps why the market is a little bit more in the professional camp, if you like. Um, but there's still huge crossover between them. So really, I'm just going to leave it up to you guys. You've heard me playing them, you've heard me talking about them, and I just want to, to highlight really that these are the two leading brands out there. If you like this video, please do give us a thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed already, please do so as we're trying to bring you more content all of the time. So and I will see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.